What are you seeing that you're ready to call the bottom? Because there's just so much dissension and debate about that. Uh, I think that's the problem. I am not, I am specifically not calling the bottom. And I think that it's a disservice to try to call the bottom. So when I say we are in a bottoming process, think about where we've been since June. We've, we were down 24% in the middle of June. We've touched that same level, a little bit worse. But I suspect that when we look back in a couple of years from now, we will have seen this long stretch over which the market bottomed. And I think that we're seeing it slowly play out. We're used to ricochet recoveries. You know, and Frank, there's this um, availability bias that all humans use and investors use it too, where you relate your most recent experience to the experience you're having now. And if you think about all of the major declines that we've had in the past decade, 2015, 2018, 2020, everything happened, the market pulled back hard and then ricocheted off. So I think we as investors have become accustomed to calling the bottom and then everything being okay. But I don't think that's how this one's playing out. I think we're in a bottoming process that's actually quite healthy and quite constructive. And that process involves things recalibrating. So we've seen really over the past year and change, but, but more um, extremely since June, we've seen things recalibrating. We've seen risk appetites recalibrating. We've seen government spending recalibrating. We've seen valuations recalibrate. We've seen behaviors recalibrate. And this is functional and healthy. Just because it's not happening in that V shape doesn't mean it's bad. So I look at this and I say, hey, as an investor, this is really great. Okay, I know that sounds callous <laughs> in a market where people are hurting and things are down, but I'll tell you why it's great as an investor. Because for the past 10 years, as we've had to research stocks, everything's moved so quickly that every stock that you research when the market's pulled back has been a fire drill. And right now there's time. You can actually breathe. You can actually read an annual report, not at light speed. You can listen to an investor day um, webcast, not at light speed. So there's time to breathe and there's time to do work. And I think the market is consolidating massive excess that happened over 10 years. If we get away with the S&P being down about 24, 26% at the worst, and it just being longer to consolidate that, I think we're gonna come out and, and I would say, hey, not so bad. So that's where I think we are. And, huh. and I do not expect a ricochet recovery. I do not expect a rally to previous highs when I say we're in a bottoming process. All right, you want us to trust the process, Jenny. I'm from Philadelphia, that's a sticky <laughs> subject. All right, before we let you go, we wanna to get to your picks. We wanna go through the picks. Obviously a very volatile market, two day rally. Looks like it come, could come to an end today. What are your picks for today, right at this moment? All right, so we've got two from our growth portfolio, Uber and United Rentals, and then two from our dividend strategy, which is Madev and Lamar. And I think when we talk about a bottoming process, I just want to highlight Uber of all of those. So you've got Madev and Lamar. I'll give you these quickly. 6.8% yield, eight times earnings on Madev. Lamar, 5.5% yield, 12 times. Uber um, is going to produce $2 billion of cash flow next year, $4 billion the following year. United Rentals, slow and steady, 5% annual annualized CAGR in um, in sorry, in revenues over the past 25 years. So you have great companies. But if you look at an Uber, right, and we think about what's going on in this bottoming process, the words I keep coming back to are asynchronous and asymmetric. So not everything's moving at the same time. And I want to, you know, I want people to be careful about not waiting for the bottom, because if you just wait and wait and wait, it, you're going to let perfect be the enemy of good enough. And if you can buy Uber down 50 plus percent from its high, and about to break 5% free cash flow yields next year and on the cusp of becoming really, really profitable. Like, don't wait for the bottom. Just buy what makes sense now. Lamar was kind of the same thing. I had actually sold Lamar last year well over 100. Then it, then it spiked up to almost 120, came way back down. It's in the mid-80s right now with a 5.5% yield. Meanwhile, they do billboards, right? Billboards up and down the Connecticut Turnpike, the New Jersey Turnpike. They have 159,000 billboards. And so you can buy these stocks in this bottoming process. You're, you may not nail the bottom, but you're going to get some great investments out of it.